go. No what? Nobody to turn to. Um, but I'm glad the Lord rescued me. Yeah, Amen. Amen. If he rescued you tonight, you got something to say praise the Lord about. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If he rescued you, there's some uh, out there in sin, <laughs> they're running to everything they can run to tonight to try to get them a good feeling. But we got the good feeling of the Holy Ghost around here tonight. And uh, we ought to be at we ought to at least say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for what God's done in my life. I could, I could just tell you the things that God's began to do in my life, and uh, I, we could stay here till midnight. We could. And I'm not lifting me up, but just the things that God has done in my life and the differences that God's made in my life. And I could, I could tell you that all night long. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you what God can do for you. Amen. You can hear about me all day long. It ain't going to do you no good. But when you hear about him, that's what makes the difference. Amen. Amen. I appreciate the opportunity to come up. I always love coming to Antioch. Uh, I told the church uh, uh, when we was getting ready to come up here, I said, y'all will be amazed at Antioch. Now, I'm not lifting Antioch up, but it's all about God. Amen. But when you get around God's people, there's something that makes you feel like home. Amen. You feel at home. And and I'm thankful for a few places. Not every place you can go like that. But I'm glad for a few places you can go where you can feel at home. Amen. But will you pray for me tonight? I don't know how to preach. I really don't. Unless the Lord comes by, I, uh, I don't know how to do nothing. Amen. But when His anointing comes by, we'll try to deliver you uh, that that He's laid upon my heart. Luke chapter number 22. Luke chapter 22. Very familiar scripture. We'll read one verse there. Then we'll read one verse in Joshua chapter number 23. And only the Lord, I, I, I tell people a lot, I'm not a very smart man, and I don't say that for pity. I've got a seventh grade education and don't know a whole lot, so if it, any of these two scriptures get tied together, it'll have to be the Lord. But I know when I was praying today, he impressed me to go this way, and that's all I know to do tonight. Yeah. Amen. Luke chapter number 22, and verse, no, we'll read two verses. Verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon... Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. I like this. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. And in, in Joshua chapter 23, and verse, verse number 2, said, And Joshua called for all Israel, and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old, stricken in age, and ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done. Ain't we seen a lot that the yes. Lord has done? Amen. 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 And to all these nations, because of you, for the Lord your God, He is He that hath fought for you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. And I, I want to try to I want to try to preach just for a minute on, on God is fighting for you. Amen. Now I, I thought about the scripture over uh, over in Luke uh, uh, where he was talking to Simon and he told Simon he said that Satan hath desired to have you. He desired to sift you as we. Now, I, I can tell all of you tonight without knowing, I don't know a lot of you, but without knowing a lot of you, uh, the devil desires to have you tonight. And he desires to sift you like he did Simon. Uh, but I thought about what Joshua was writing here uh, in, in the Scripture, and he was telling them that they had seen all the wonders. And he's talking to the children of Israel here, and we all know uh, that where the children of Israel had come from. We all know uh, that they'd been down there in Pharaoh's land and been in bondage and been down there, in other words, as slaves and servants under Pharaoh. Uh, but then God sent Moses and brought them out. I'm going to skip through it for the sake of time. Uh, but how did he brought them out? And they begin to wander around in the wilderness. And uh, now it comes down to this time that Joshua was reminding them about all that God hath done for them. And he told them in the scripture, he said, you've seen uh, how God has moved. Now, uh, that there's a lot of people today 
that the devil talks to and the devil fights and he tests in them trials and temptations. But you know uh, tonight where that God has brought you from. Uh, if every one of us took a take back uh, a roll in our mind tonight of where that God has brought us from and the things uh, uh, that God has done just in your life. Uh, why we, we could shout the house down uh, uh, just to know, Brother Brandon, uh, at where God has brought us from. Uh, uh, but he reminded them there uh, about how that God had brought them this far. Uh, but he did not stop there. Uh, Joshua said that God, uh, he's the one that's fought for you. Uh, he's the one that's been there for you. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I love my daddy uh, and I love my wife. Uh, but they've not been the ones uh, that's been there with me uh, in the bad times, Dallas. Uh, but it's been God uh, that's been there for me uh, when nobody else was. Uh, I ain't got nobody else uh, to turn to. I've got a lot of friends, uh, but friends will fail you uh, and friends will cut you short. Uh, but thanks be to God, uh, there's one tonight uh, that will always be there uh, when nobody else is, uh, when the phone line's busy, uh, when nobody can talk. Uh, God will be there when nobody else will. Amen. Amen. But he told Simon, he said, Simon, he said the devil desires to have you. He wants you. Amen. That's what I want to try to tell you tonight. Uh, the devil wants you. He wants your testimony. He wants your song. Uh, he wants everything to do with you. He wants them hand raised up. Uh, the devil wants that away. Uh, he don't want you to praise the Lord. Uh, he don't want you to sing your song. Uh, amen. But God has fought for you. Uh, and God has brought you out of bondage. Uh, and it, but hey, uh, God has brought you uh, uh, where nobody else to bring you from. But God has fought the battle. Give Him praise. Give Him the honor for all He's done. Amen. God has fought for you. I thought how that David, very familiar story. David in the Bible, everybody knows the story about David and about Goliath. How did he got down there? And his brothers was up against these Philistines. And how did he told them? He said, all right. And David said, I'm going to go down there. Just out of curiosity. I'm going to see what's going on. Oh my. But little did they know. And then when David got down there, it was a little bit more than curiosity. Hey man, he got down there and he went up. But there was one thing that caught my attention. When Saul put his armor on him and he got him arrayed to go into battle. Hey man, David took it off and he said it ain't been approved. Hallelujah tonight. There's a lot of things that people's getting in their lives. It ain't been approved. Hey man, God's the only one. Oh, hallelujah. God's the only one that can fight for you. God's the only one that you can put his armor on and win the battle. Amen. He got on down through the time. He got on down through the time. After he got off the armor, David got down there and began to go up against the Philistine. He got down there and gathered his stones. And always look, the Bible said five smooth stones that David got. Amen. If you number them, amen, F-A-I-T-H. David went down to the brook and he brought back faith. Amen. What does faith do? Amen. Faith will go a long way. Amen. But when he got down there, he began to pray to God and he said, God, he said, this battle's not mine, but this battle is thine, O Lord. Who tonight is fighting for you? God's fighting for you. And York, I want to leave something with you. Amen. When you get down in the dump, God will fight for you. When the trials get so hard that you can't seem to ride, God will fight for you. When nobody else will. Amen. He said, All right. 
He got down there after he said, this is your battle, Lord. He got on down there. He went up before Goliath. And God directed the stone. You know what's wrong with people today? They're fighting their own battles. Oh, yeah. They're fighting their own battles. They say, preacher, I got a drinking problem. I've been trying to quit. Well, if you get saved, you quit drinking. Amen. I've got, a, I've got a gambling problem, preacher. Amen. But hey, if you'll get saved, amen, you'll quit gambling. Amen. That's what's wrong with people. Uh, they're trying to live right uh, with their God. Uh, but the only way a God will fight for you uh, is when you surrender your life to Him and say, God, Him. Amen. amen. That's the only way. I've seen a lot of folks. I know Brother Jason has. But I've seen a lot of folks try to live right before they ever get right. And they expect God to fight for them. God's not going to fight for you. Amen out there in sin. He's not going to do that. Oh, but you come to him tonight with a broken heart and a contract spirit. And you say, Lord, here I am. I have nowhere else to turn. I have nowhere else to go. And God will be there. He'll fight off the powers of hell. And he'll help you get what you need. He had reminded them where he brought them from. Amen. I'm afraid we're living in a day, Brother Jason, where people's forgetting where God brought them from. We come into the church house and we're down in the dunk. We don't want to praise the Lord. Amen. But I'm, I'm confident tonight to say this. And th- these folks from Burnsville knows they've heard it a hundred times. Amen. If, amen, God brought you out of sin, that's enough to get you off of your pew and get you to praise the Lord. Amen. If God never done a single thing for me but saved my dying soul from hell, I've got a reason. I said I've got a reason to shout the praises of God throughout eternity. Uh, because he rescued me when nobody else would. Amen. 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 The devil wants you. And the devil desires to have you. Why does he desire to have you? Well, let's put it this way. If you ain't one of God's children tonight, he don't desire you because he done got you. Amen. But you know the ones he's after? Amen. He's after this man of God right here. He's after these men of God. That's the ones that he wants. Because you know why? If he can get them, then he's got some of you because of the confidence that you've got built up in them and the respect for the men of God. If he can get some of the people that's dearest to you to fall and to give in, he'll have you just as well. Amen. 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 But you need to remind yourself where God's brought you from. Amen. Them children of Israel, something that always bummed me a little bit. The children of Israel, after God done what he done to bring them out, they still, Sister Christie, murmured and complained because where God brought I feel like we're getting people like that in the house of God tonight. Amen. God's done so much for you. And God brought you so much. Amen. But just because it didn't go your way, you want him. I didn't know I was going to preach all this. You want to murmur and complain. But I'm there to tell you tonight that God's fighting for you. All he's wanting you to do is say, hey, put the armor of God on, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Got your feet with the preparation of the gospel and go fight for God. Amen. God's a fighting for you. He's just wanting some people that says, Lord, I've got my armor on. God, I've got my armor on. He's not looking for them ones that's going to go to the back line. He's not looking for them ones that's going to sneak in back here and say, Lord, use everybody else before you use me. No. He's looking for them ones that's going to jump right up in the front and say, God, I want to go fight today. I want to fight in the Hagans in revival. He, he needs you to this week to jump up here on the front line and say, God, I'm here to fight. Let me fight this battle. 
Let me fight against the hindrances. And let me fight for the people of God. God's fought for us. So shouldn't we fight for one another? Where we're at in the day that we live in, it's not mine. It's not my people. It's not, it's not my it's not my family, so why should I put my life in jeopardy? Amen. In the natural, there's men over in Dallas that don't even know who I am. You go over and tell them Nathan Wheeler said hello. They wouldn't know who you was talking about. Hey, remember, they're fighting for my freedom to be able to stand here tonight and tell you about the goodness of God. They're fighting for your pastor's freedom. They're fighting for Antioch's freedom. They don't know who we are. But most of all, they was one on Calvary. They done it all for every one of us. And he's letting you know, I'm a fighting for you. So we ought to fight for one another. Oh, yeah. I mean, y'all seen good sisters and good brothers fight for fighting a battle. Yeah. Seemed like they just couldn't get out of it. Oh, yeah. Seemed like seemed like they just got worse. Yeah. I've seen it right in my own church. I've seen them get up against things, Brother Jason, and you could tell it was killing them. Oh, yeah. Amen. But you know all they needed? They needed a good brother yeah. or a good sister to come over right. and say, I'm helping you. Right. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. What's happened to the love among us? Uh, what's happened to remembering uh, that you used to be there too? Uh, what happened to remembering uh, you once was in the valley? Uh, you wasn't always on the mountain. Let's fight for one another. That's good. One day. One day. One day. Amen. I may be down in the bottom. And you may have to come by and say, hey, brother. I'm here to fight for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Not always. People look at the man of God and they say, oh, the man of God, boy, he's got it made. He gets up and preaches every Sunday, every Wednesday. Boy, he got, he lets them glory taters fly. It's not always on the glory tater roll. Uh, for the man of God, he gets down just like you do. Uh, he gets discouraged just like you do. Uh, but how many times have you found yourself uh, in behind him, uh, lifting him up? God brought you from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You just, boy, can I obey the Lord? Obey. Amen. I didn't know all this was in here. Amen. But we look a lot of times. I would say I was raised in a Christian home. Brother Jason knows my daddy. I was raised in a good godly home. Good God-fearing daddy. Good God-fearing mama. That went on to be with the Lord just a few weeks ago. Amen. But I've got hope that I'll see her again. Amen. One of my last words that I spoke to her, Brother Jason. I said, Mama, I said, I'll see you again. And I walked out the room. Amen. But hey, man, listen here. But if we don't fight for one another and we don't help each other, we'll not get there to that land. But I was raised in a good home. So y'all that ain't been raised in a good home, raised in the right home, it'd be easy for me to say, well, I don't know how to fight for them because I've never been there. Let me tell you how to fight for somebody that you don't know how to fight for. The old calluses on them knees. Uh, the old tear stains on these altars that's going away. Amen. There used to be some times. Amen. You could probably uh, remember puddles of tears on the altar. Where are they going to? Uh, well, you're saying, preacher, we've quit fighting for people. Amen. You want to see lost saved in this revival? Uh, you want to see lost come to the Lord? Uh, amen. Start fighting for them. Uh, start getting a hold of God for them. Uh, and we can see some evidence of God uh, fighting for us. Amen, I remember as a lad, Daddy liked the ginseng hunt. Him and Papa. And I remember as a little boy, send Isaac up here. Where's Isaac at? Amen, send him up here. Amen, I remember as a little boy, I used to go ginseng hunting with Papa. And Daddy and we would climb up the mountains. And some of them places, I didn't know about them places. Amen, but I remember. Amen, we'd come up to hard places. 
Amen. And you stand right there. Amen. Daddy, they'd be up here. But they were strong enough. They could get up in them places. But I was down there. And I looked up and I said, Papa, Daddy, I can't get up there. Hallelujah, I'm going to leave this place. Amen. But I remember Papa. He'd grab my hand. He'd say, Here, son, I'll help you. Amen. What's happened today? We need to grab a hold of one another and help them get through the time that they going through. You go sit down. Amen. There was a time in my life. Boy, I'm going to tell this. There's a time in my life. Amen. That I got down and out. But Jason, amen. You may have heard me tell it before, but I'm going to tell it again. Amen. I, my faith went on trial. Read 1 Peter 1 and 7 said, but the trying of your faith. Amen. My faith got there. Amen. I got on trial. Amen. Two days, Sister Hannah, after he was born, uh, the doctor looked at me in the eye and said he's got a rare birth defect. And they caught him my little lipoma ninja cell. And they said he'll never be able to walk. And he'll never be able to use the bathroom on his own. I sat down there at six months old. He went into the operating room. And I sat back there in the corner. And I put my face in my hands. And I said, God, I preached to your people about having faith in God. And about trusting you. And now here I am in a valley of decision. I can't fight for my own self and God spoke to me and he said hey he said all you gotta do is put your trust in me you know what he was telling me I said I'll fight for you walk right down through yonder and go back to your mama tell me he can't walk how is it that he can walk God he called for me. He held me. But I couldn't help myself. God fought for me. Amen. That's why some of us are still in the same place we've always been. We've not let God fight for me. I never will forget, Brother Brandon. My face in my hand. I said, God. I don't know what to do. I won't ever be able to preach about having faith in you no more. And God said, no, 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 no. He said, I'm going to fight for you. Yeah. Yeah. There's been times since then. Can I preach my heart? There's been times since then. Me and that little woman right there. We've had financial trouble. We've had everything in the world seem like fall to pieces. And I didn't know which way to turn. But God said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to fight for you. Amen. Hey, God is willing to fight for you. Hallelujah. September the 16th. 2019, my mama went to Mission Hospital. We watched her struggle for breathe. They put her on a BiPAP machine, blowing air in her mouth. They said it's like sticking your head out a window at 55 mile an hour. Is what it took to get her to breathe. We prayed, Dallas. We told the Lord, we said, Lord, we won't see mama go home. Yeah. The end of the month of September, Mama went home. Yeah. Well, she went to hospice. And how many of y'all, y'all know anything about hospice? How many people see your family go out of hospice? We pray to God, and not even a week did she spend in hospice and went home. Yeah, that's right. That's one time. Not long before she died, she was back in hospice. Yeah. She'd come home again. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, what, y'all with me? Yeah, yeah. boy. Right. Then she went back to the hospice. And I said, Lord, I've seen enough. You've proved that you'll fight for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. You've proved. Yes, You've sir. proved. That's right, brother. That's right. Amen. Amen. Child, be the hardest prayer that you've ever prayed is God, I'll let my mama go. 
you know, what are you talking about tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. But hey, guess what? But hey, guess what? God come through enough. God showed me that he was going to fight for me enough. God didn't have to lay it. God didn't have to put a thousand dollar bills. Amen. In my banking account. All he had to do is let my mama. Amen. Come out of hospice. And they give me enough hope. And let me know that he will fight for me. He's faithful if you'll trust in him. Amen. I fought for you. I fought for you. Anybody ever been in a trial? Everybody, anybody ever been in a storm? Anybody ever just come into church and just feel like it? What you use? Jason, maybe you're different than me, but have you ever stood up here and just felt like what you use to pastor? Yeah, bless him, Lord. Any other time, but bless him, happy. God is fighting. God is fighting. Who's he fighting for, church? You. You know why it's important for you to stay with God and you to stay with God? So God can see that that little Addison. So he's, God fought for my mom and daddy. And he done has. But if he fought for them, he'll fight for me. I said, if he'll fight for them, he'll fight for me. You know the reason I see the importance? You know the reason I see of importance in our church house? For us to hang on to God. And us to get a hold of the realness of God. You know why I see that it's so important? Because I look around in Antioch and Sheriff Brooks are the same way. And I see so many little ones. They need to see the God you serve fought for you. They need to see that the God that you serve has been proven true. James, it ain't always a bed of roses. It's not always seem like I don't always come in church and feel like lifting my hands up. But I want all them little ones to know that God is a fight for my church. And he'll fight for me with whatever I come up against. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe somebody come to the piano. I don't know your heart tonight. I don't know your heart. Maybe you're young. Maybe you're elder. 